Ah yes, do you love Christmas lights? Me too, and if you want to talk about lights, let's get back to the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles. This is all the Jews coming to Jerusalem and living in tents for a week to remember how God led his people through the wilderness in the Old Testament. And at night, they would light that city up, particularly in the temple. They would put these four massive candelabras in there and there would be torches and people would be dancing and there would be music into the night. And in the middle of that scene, Jesus, master of the moment, says in John 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. This is one of the famous I am statements of Jesus Christ as he claims to be deity. Remember, the I am goes all the way back to God speaking from the burning bush to Moses saying, I am that I am. And now Jesus says, ego I me in the Greek, I am. And he says many different I am statements. A couple of famous ones here in John 8. The first one, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. So not only does Jesus claim to be the light of the world that came into the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it or overpower it, but he also says that whoever believes in him and follows him and gives their life to him, they will have his light of life in them too. And they will not walk in darkness. And that's a double negative in the Greek. It means they cannot walk in darkness. So Jesus is saying that he's the light, and once you follow him, you're in the light, and you won't go back to living a lifestyle of darkness ever again. And that's different than what a lot of people are saying today. People talk about their Christian life kind of like it's a light switch, and they're in the light sometimes, the light's on, then they're back in the dark and their sin sometimes, and they just kind of go back and forth as the pattern of their life. And Jesus is saying something different here. He's saying, no, once you're with me in the light, you have my light in you. And John picked this up when he wrote 1 John 1, verses 5 to 7. He says, God in light is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say that we are in the light but walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So this is a theme that John really develops throughout his writings, this contrast between the light and the darkness. And if Jesus is the light and we believe in Jesus, then we walk in the light as he is in the light. And I just wanna encourage you, if you're reading scripture of the day, this is our eighth chapter of the Gospel of John, if you're sticking with this every day, Jesus says something in in John eight, he says something in verse uh, 31, if you abide in my word, You are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So I just want to encourage you, remain, stay, meno. That's what that word abide there, the Greek word is meno. You could translate it remain or stay. Hey, keep keep on staying in the word. And and that truth that you're getting in, that truth's going to set you free. Set you free from the power of darkness, from the slavery of sin. Uh, That truth is really going to enable you to live the Christian life. So keep remaining in the word and let that truth set you free. There's an encouragement from Jesus Christ for you. So this chapter is kind of the fallout that happens in the feast. And uh, we're gonna break it down into two sections. First, let's start where where we picked it up in John 8, 12. Let's go from verse 12 to verse 59 at the end of the chapter. And this is Jesus says, I am. That's the theme. From verse 12 where he says, I am the light of the world, all the way to the end where he says, before Abraham was, I am. Because this whole scene where Jesus shows up at the feast and he says that he can put living water, rivers of living water in our souls. He says, I am the light of the world. He's kind of mastering these key moments at the feast of tabernacles there. Well, it turns into a lot of controversy. 
And it turns into some believing in Christ, some coming to arrest Christ, but they don't do it because it's not his time yet. But there's people who want to kill him, and it just kind of reaches a climax at the end of the chapter when some of the Jewish leaders are arguing with Jesus, and he flat out says, you're of your father, the devil, and they're coming back at him. And it's getting really intense. And by the end, Jesus just, they say, hey, you're not even 50 years old. And he says, yeah, but before Abraham was, I am. And they know what he's claiming. They know where he's going with the I am statement, reference to God in Exodus. They know where he's going with pre-existing father Abraham of the Jewish people. See, there's this argument that they think they're fine because of who they are, because they're Jews, because they're in the line of Abraham. And he's saying, no, you're not okay because you don't know me. It's about believing in me. And there's this vicious debate. And when he says that he predates Abraham, that he was alive before Abraham, they pick up stones to kill him. They cannot handle Jesus claiming to be God. And miraculously, Jesus hides himself and leaves the temple. And so we have this whole account here of Jesus at the Feast of Tabernacles, really John 7 and 8, where Jesus says amazing things. People are believing in him. People can't even arrest him because look at what he's teaching. But then other people are picking up stones to kill him. Now, here's the part that we skipped. Verses 1 to 11 is what Jesus did not say. Okay? Because this story that maybe you've heard before in John 8, 1 through 11, we have the story of the woman who's found guilty of adultery. And Jesus uh, says, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone. Now, maybe you've heard that story before and Jesus is riding in the dirt and nobody throws a, nobody throws a stone, nobody makes an accusation. He says to the woman, go and sin no more. Maybe you've heard that story. And it's a powerful story. But is that story actually written by the Apostle John? Is it actually a part of the original manuscript of this gospel? Well, you can see there's this note here right before John 8 that the earliest manuscripts do not include this section of Scripture. That means in some of the ancient manuscripts that we have in the Greek language, and one you could look up and do some research on if you want, is Codex Sinaiticus. Okay, one of the earliest complete manuscripts of all the New Testament, and it doesn't have this section. In fact, a lot of the manuscripts don't have this section, and even some of the ancient Greek manuscripts, they have this section, but in a different place. It's not always in the same spot, and that leads the textual critics, those who really look at how can we be sure that this is what was written a long ago, and it's been faithfully preserved and copied down to us, uh, they would say this section, hey, we, we, it may not really be in there, and that's why they put these notes in there. And I think the conclusion that you and I should come to is this was not written by the Apostle John. It wasn't a part of the original manuscript of the gospel. And that might sound very alarming, but it's actually encouraging that if anything has been added throughout history, because there are so many thousands of ancient manuscripts, and they can study them and see when they were written and where they come from and compare them if there's things Things that don't line up, they can be identified. And we can know that whatever people did try to add to the scripture, we can identify it and know what the real scripture is. And so this story is nice, but it really doesn't even fit in with what's happening here at the feast. Like if you read John 8, 12, right at the end of John 7, it makes a lot of sense that this is one story really in John 7 and 8 about Jesus going to the feast and what happened there. And, and part of the reason it kind of gets broken into two chapters is the addition of that story, which, which the earliest manuscripts do not include. So just like we learned at the end of Mark 16, here in John 8, these are the two biggest sections of Scripture that we don't think really are scripture. They were not in many of the early manuscripts and it appears that they were added later, which is great that we can detect that and know that the rest really is what John wrote, his eyewitness account. And so the word of Jesus that we should meditate on today in John 8 is I am. I am that I am. 
Uh, that's a reference back to what God says to his people in the Old Testament. Jesus is saying it here in the New Testament. It speaks to God's self sufficiency, that he doesn't need anything else, that he has always existed in eternity past. He is alive right now, and he evermore will be, that we have an eternal, self-sufficient God, and that he revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ, and he said that he's the light, and you can follow him into the light. And I encourage you to walk in the light of Jesus Christ today, and we'll see you for more on scripture of the day.